Now that was EPL in general, but how does SSIS look? So this is the SSIS architecture. And you can see that there are various components in this. So basically what we need to focus on here is that there are there's something called the package. So let me just change this. There's something called the package over here. That is what we'll be creating. A package has a few tasks, and there's a container. You can club the tasks together in a container and so on. And then there's a data flow task, and data flow task has its own uh, design over here. And then there are other things provided over here. So these two boxes over here, basically, they define your two engines in your SSIS. So there are two different engines that are used in SSIS. One is your runtime engine, and the another one is your data flow engine. So this is integration services runtime engine. This is integration services data flow engine. What does the integration services runtime engine do? It defines your control flow. So this is your control within your package. Control is nothing but basically defining the sequence in which the different tasks would be would be executed. So you define the sequence that this task has to be executed first. Then you can also define your constraints that if this task completes successfully, then the next task would be executed and so on. So all this is defined in your control flow, which is managed by the integration services runtime engine. So once you've defined all that, the other things that you can define in your control flow are basically your log providers, what kind of logging you want to do. So you run your uh, ETL job, SSIS job, you want to log the information, how many records were inserted and so on, what time did the job run, how much time did the job take to run. So all that logging information can be defined in the control flow. You can have your event handlers, which are nothing but exception handlers. So any kind of error occurs or something occurs, exception occurs while executing, you need to capture that. Then you have your connection managers. Connection managers are nothing but your database connections, your flat file connections to connect to external data sources or destinations. Uh, enumerators, you can just leave them. And then you have your tasks, which are predefined tasks in your SSIS. So you can just drag and drop and use those tasks. You can also do your custom coding if you want to really calculate, really design a customized application. So there are lots of built-in tasks, so you really need to go this way. But if you want to, then you can do your coding in Microsoft.net and so on, so that you can create your custom tasks. Then, okay, so these are the things basically that would come in your control flow. Now, a control flow would also be calling, it calls all the tasks in some particular order that you define. One of those tasks is your data flow task. Now, data flow task is where the actual ETL happens extraction transformation load. This data flow task is executed by another engine. So there are separate engines for the control flow and the data flow. The data flow task is executed by the integration services data flow engine. Now this is a very high performance engine because this is where the actual ETL is taking place. This is where you're extracting the data from the source, transforming it and loading into the data warehouse. So this is where all the data processing is happening. So that is why it's a very powerful engine. So you have your sources, which can be different sources combined together, performing some transformations and loading them into your destinations. So here you have your data flow components, which are again predefined components as we'll see in the SSIS. And then you can have your custom data flow components, which you can define by doing uh, customized coding using .NET, uh, Microsoft .NET. Now, what is this MSDB database? MSDB database is the database that SQL Server database would provide. That is the master database, wherein all your metadata related to the uh, job the workflows that you designed would be stored. So all that goes into the MSDB database. That is one of the SQL Server databases. .dtsx file is basically the package extension. So uh, data transformation source extension file. Uh, earlier the SSIS and things were called DTS. There were DTS tools very early on. So uh, that is from where the extension comes in. 
then you have the SSIS designer to design this control flow. You can also use the SSIS wizard. If you're new or if you want to use the wizards, you can have your custom application designed by doing your custom codings. And then command line utilities can be used for execution of packages and so on. So this is broadly your SSIS architecture. The main things that you need to focus on here are your two data in your two uh, runtime engines or two services engine. One is the runtime engine that uh, executes your control flow, and then you have the data flow engine, which is a very high performance engine and executes your data flow tasks, which are the actual source transformation destination tasks. And the control flow, you just define the sequence of tasks that needs to be executed. At the same time, you define your login preferences, your exception handling, your connection managers, and so on. And the data flow task, you read from a source, which can, could be a database, which could be files or other sources. You transform that data using the built-in data flow task or your customized data flow component, and then you load it into your data warehouse or any relational database, wherever you want to load it. So this is how your SSIS architecture looks. Now data flow task, this is simply a design of the data flow task. So you can read from your file or a database and the external columns that you read into your source page or source task. You have two outputs coming out from your source task, which is an output link and then an error output link. So you can, you can collect your error records also somewhere if you want, or you can just direct the output to a transformation task. And the output from the transformation task would be loaded to a destination 